Hello everyone, this is Gorax with another Dragonair Silence God video. Today I will present to you 10 top tier Temporal Vortex teams in Season 4. Please take into consideration that I do not claim this is how it's going to be as my gear and understanding of some teams might not be as good as yours, so your scores might differ than mine and most likely will be much higher due to the gear as well as the affinity development. All the tests were done using the same affinity, which is not maxed out, so sadly we can see the impact of the last three nodes. Another thing that is worth mentioning is current weak buffs. The boss takes 30% more radiant damage, which benefit teams such as Rally and Aura. However, the second part benefits teams that can apply multiple debuffs on the boss to increase damage by 6% per debuff and avoid the boss having 6% damage reduction. The difference between Season 4 and Season 3 will most likely come to the time certain teams can survive. It is no longer easy to survive and stay past 150 stacks as we lost Happy Tier Set. We will most likely see more than one three support teams in the top. If you're looking for a quick summary, skip to the end of the video. Otherwise, let's go over the teams. First of all, I did not include Salmon team in the tests. The damage was way below the top 10. Number 10, despite all the buffs in this week, is the Rally team. Just before I go over the equipment and the timings, I want to mention that on the test server, I only have a one, a single crit damage main stat glove, so some of the heroes will have infl inflated critical rate. Rally team using Ardref as a Witcher's Remain applier, built around attack speed and haste to keep her below 15 seconds to keep up with the rotation of the rally damage dealers. Garius is built as a tank with ancestral protection set to mitigate damage taken by our damage dealers. Felander is using his exclusive artifact and is built around crit rate and crit damage. Filto is using Flute of the King and is built around crit and crit damage as well. Lorenfiel is using the new OP artifact that grants everyone 10% attack and defense. As someone who does not play Rally in the Vortex, I have help from official Discord setting these timers and they work the best during my tests. Ardrev has to start early to apply defense down by the time our damage dealers start their own rotation, while Garius provides us with huge shield just as the boss ultimate hits us. We use Lorenfield ultimate first, followed by our damage dealers. Sadly, the team survives only around 7 minutes and deals 74 million damage. But as I said previously, all most of the teams that do not run free supports will live around 6 to 7 minutes. If you have ideas how to improve this team, let me know in the comment section. Ninth place is taken by Burn Team, confirming once again that they are not the best single target damage type. However, we can see a big improvement compared to the last season. The team is built about buffing Asketius as much as possible and making sure we have 10 burn stacks on each rotation. Hikestone is the new addition to the team. I built him as a hybrid with attack and enlightenment, utilizing a rascal slingshot to hit accuracy cap as we need it to constantly apply burn via his passive. There might be other builds that will be better, like Cyril set on him and more offensive set on Cenaral. Asketius is our main damage source. He is using his exclusive artifact and is built around crit rate and crit damage. Cenaral is here to grant us huge shields, apply attack penalty constantly and also utilizing the Cyril set, giving us attack up and he is built offensively. Calavera is our tank but also Solar King's applier, boosting our damage further. She is built with defensive stats. Lastly, our Witches Remain applier, Durem, who is also built offensively to add that extra source of damage and boost Asketius damage via his ultimate. When it comes to skill timings, these are the ones I had the most success with. Obviously, they can be tweaked around and during the tests, I did not manually cast Sonara's ultimate which can also boost the damage of the team. We start the rotation with Durham applying Witches Remain, buffing burn heroes, then Pikestone to apply the last burn just in case 
and followed by Sketius to consume all the burn and deal massive damage. We have Calavera casting her ultimate just before boss hits us with his ultimate, making sure we have full HP and get defense up too. Scenario skips the first rotation and uses his ultimate as the boss single target skill is about to land, then heals the team 5 seconds later, just before the defense down skill hit us. The team is able to stay alive for almost 7 minutes and deals 77 million damage, which is just slightly above the rally team. The Aura team has ranked 8th. The team consists of 3 supports as any other addition was not improving the damage and the team died early. This team can stay alive for longer, allowing Aemon Lydia to dish out some extra damage. Ardreff is built with Horn and we are using attack speed set on her to make sure we can apply as much buffs as possible. She has no issues surviving the fight. However, if you have Asila, you can replace Ardreff with her. Aemon Lydia uses her exclusive artifact and is built around attack and crit damage. Diantha is the one enabling Aemon Lydia and she's using the new artifact that is amazing and boosted the damage of this team alone by approximately 7 million damage. Garius similarly to any other team that I showed so far and going forward will be built in the same way with Gatekeeper Stab Ancestral Protection set to mitigate damage that the team takes. And lastly, we have Rose, our Witches Remain Applier and Cyril Set Enabler. If you're lucky with the Haste Runes, you can try Sagomir variant of this team that was viable in Season 2 when we were playing Ice Blast. The timings can be adjusted to your needs. You can make sure Ardrev goes on default, we delay our damage dealers to hit just after roses, apply the witches remain and grant us serial set buff. The aura team leaves for over 9 minutes and does 87 million damage which is 10 million more than the burn team. If you have any ideas how, you, how we could improve this team, leave the comment. 7th place is taken by shadow team that I think is my favorite and has potential to even become better once we crack the code. I tried Daphne in the team and she was dying way before anyone else in the team and anything else did not improve the team's damage by ma. This is when I brought in Perseus who can reduce the boss attack by 30% and in previous videos I confirmed it works on the Vortex. Another big boost of damage came from using Astion, a new support for the Necro faction. She's a healer who will be our main tank. The defense she steals with her passive works on the boss and is like a permanent witch's remain but we can still apply which is remain effect to lower the boss defense even further. Perseus will be built offensively utilizing the Echo of War set and the new artifact Chest of Radiance that is powerful and we, and we can obtain it from the pillars. This grants us 10% attack and 10% defense. Ozul will not be using his exclusive artifact as I found Shadow Spoon to be on par with it and sometimes even slightly better. He'll also be using Echo of the War set to utilize his tremendous basic damage. Asteon will be our horn buff applier and she will also be a tank using Hope of Oasis set to mitigate damage when she is above 60% HP. Pelosia is our next sapper with Aurelium Vest and Ancestral Protection set to mitigate team's damage. Taldi will be our Witch's Remain applier as he can apply it constantly and this also allow us to get the serial buff almost all the time. When it comes to timings they could not be simpler. We will let our damage dealers cast their ultimates on default and just time the supports. With Felosia shielding against the ultimate and Astion just as we are about to get hit with the single target, allowing her ultimate to heal for the next 10 seconds. This is the first team on our list that can hit over 100 million damage and can be improved further as Perseus is an optional pick. If you have ideas who else we could use here, 
let me know in the comment section. The next two teams have surprised me as I would not expect them to be where they are. Coming in on sixth place is Dauntless team who is getting the benefits of Radiant supports while struggling in previous season with the Necrosis ones. The powerful single target heroes are here to target their plays back, however, they might require more min-maxing and better affinity before this happens. No new impactful heroes been released to help them, but as we know, whales have them highly inspired. I tried multiple versions of this team as well, as the one with Sufa, but this one had the best outcome. Since Nastienka and Evelios are the main sources of the damage, we build Farival with Chest of Radiance, and this gives us a better overall result compared to the Lamb. He's also built with Echoes of War set. Evelius is using Queen's Fan and is using the buffed Enlightenment set that went from 20% to 25% increased derivative damage. We want this to boost his potential. Nastienka is using her exclusive artifact and is also utilizing the new Echo of War set. Ardref is our Witch's Remain applier and I tried running Cyril set on her but the results were lower due to how unstable the survivability of the team became. Garius is built as in any other team using the staff and the ancestral protection set. When it comes to the timings they are pretty straightforward. We use Ardref on default as she starts her rotation at 9.6 seconds. Far Evil starts at 9, however the animation is about 2 seconds long so he starts shooting at 11 which is where we cast Nastienka's ultimate. Evelios could be placed on default as well as he already ignores 100% of the boss defense. Garius casts Big Shield when the boss ultimate is about to hit us. Surprisingly, the team's damage is only 8 million above the shadow team and team struggles to survive for longer than 7 minutes. If you have ideas how we could improve it, please let me know. Next team is the biggest surprise on the list as their result is something I would not have expected but it's all thanks to my most wanted season 4 hero Orfina. Thunderbolt has finally came out of their shell and Paracunte is not the only damage source. We really don't need anyone else from the Thunderbolt group to join this team. This is another team that utilizes free sappers as the two damage dealers are quite powerful. Perkunte is going to use his exclusive artifact and since he's above 200% crit damage, he will use the Shade of Death set. Orfina will use the Great River Lamp, which she can max out quite fast. This was suggested to me by Hype Pseudo, who will release his own test results soon, as well as the free-to-play friendly setups. She will also use the Echo of War set to maximize her basic attack damage as this is where most of her damage will be coming from. However, we also need to ensure we have enough accuracy to apply Electrocuted. Ardref will be with the Horn Applier, Garius will be with the Staff and Rose will apply Witch's Remains and grant us Cyril Buff. When it comes to the timings, they might be changed and tweaked around, however, those work well for me. The idea here is similar to previous teams when it comes to the supports, but the reason why we use Orfina's ultimate before the witch's remain is her ultimate lasts for 15 seconds while the witch's remains last for only 10, allowing us to start five, start 5 seconds earlier and still get the full benefits. This allows us to charge Perkundus overload stacks to max before he unleashes his power. This team ended up doing 117 million damage, which is 11 million more than the single target gods, the Dauntless, which is very surprising and the reason why I really want Orfina as this team will also do tremendous damage on multiple targets. Let me know what you think about this team in the comment section. We are now going to cover the top 4 teams. Which one did not quite make it? The answer is Ice Blast, who comes in hard on rank 4, slightly behind rank 3. I think I spent the most time trying different heroes and approaches and it pays off because due to few changes this team went from 100 million damage to where it is now. I tried a new hero Miro 
but it is all about Beldel. This team could probably run with three supports if we had a good choice, but Zorak works well too. We build the team in a rather standard fashion with Sheena being the Witch's Remains Applier and Serial Set Enabler. Beldel being our main damage source using her exclusive artifact and Emissary Set which surprisingly gave me on average 4 million damage increase other than the other sets. Maybe because the gear is nowhere be to be imperfect. Astion will be built as a tank with horn and Felosia will shield us. The biggest surprise was when I tried to run Perseus here in this team, uh, as in the shadow team, to find out he does better with the chest than Zorak with the fan. So one of the community members, Mambers, suggested why not chest on Zorak then? And well, extra 5 million of damage came out of it. We still however build him with enlightenment set. The skill timings are really simple and if you played the Ice Blast team before, you know them by heart. I did however tweak the support times a little bit as it seems to work better for this team, but as always they can be changed to suit your needs and counter weekly buffs. We start our damage rotation with Zorak's ultimate to boost all the Ice Blast hero's damage, then follow with Sheena to apply Witch's Remains and grant us serial set buff, and then Beldel's ultimate. This team has scored 135 million damage, which is just barely behind the top 3 team. With proper improvements and later affinity stages, we might be able to jump into the top 3. However, if you have other suggestions, please let me know. The next two teams are 1 million damage apart, which can mean either of them can be 3rd or 2nd. They both scale of enlightenment and are within the same affinity group. 3rd place is a poison team with Lothiar as the main damage dealer. This team however has a high required Romance as it needs Corin with over 178 haste and refresh all the poison stacks. The two supports we will use will be used between all the top 3 teams and will use the same timings and equipment. Now I know that Calavera is only obtainable later into the season, but I had way better results with her than with alternatives such as Furbuff or Ogok. We build Cinarel with Gatekeeper Staff and Cyril set Calavera with Horn and Ancestral Protection set as she will be our main tank. Lothiar will use his exclusive artifact in Enlightenment set that got buffed by 5%, while Twitch will apply Witch's Remain and use Emissary set as it gave me the best results. The mandatory hero Corin has few requirements that need to be met to make this team work, and if you can't do it, you can't play it. First, we need to rift our glass, which grants us 100 haste. We need two different haste sets, which takes us to 140 total haste. Then we need another 38 haste from the runes. If you can get more, then it's fine. When it comes to timings, this is the first time I was able to run this setup, as in previous seasons, I could never get enough haste for Corin, as the runes I had access to on the test server were just terrible, so my timings might not be perfect, but if it works for me, it will work for you. Please keep in mind that Scenario and Calavera will have the exact same timings in the next teams that will follow. We play Corin as the on default as we want him to cast his ultimate as often as possible to refresh the stacks. Twitch will cast his ultimate to apply Witch's Remains and we will follow with Lothiar. The poison team comes in third with 140 million damage which is just 5 million damage ahead of the Ice Blast and very very close to the second place. If you have any suggestions how to improve this team, please let me know in the comment section. Flora is bugged. Second place is occupied by the wild team. Boost to the enlightenment set and allowing wild team to score high. While there might be better heroes to help Flora, I feel confident using Onalnen and Eric. But keep in mind that despite Poison Team being just a little bit behind, Poison Team is applying an extra debuff on the boss, increasing their damage by an additional 6%, which Wild Team can do. We build our supports in the same manner as with the previous team, Cineral with Staff and Cyril Set, Calavara as a tank with Horn and Ancestral Protection. Flora is using her exclusive artifact and the Enlightenment Set. Eric is 
is our witch's remain applier and we'll use emissary set as this set worked better on him and Tonalnen. Again, this might be because I don't have the perfect gear on a test server. Tonalnen will use the Flom Tongue artifact. When it comes to the casting, Sinaril casts his ultimate before the boss single hit hits us so he can shield before the defense down attack. Alavara will heal and grant us defense up before the ultimate hits us. We start our damage rotation with Flora's ultimate, followed by Eric and Tonalnen at the end, second later to let Eric apply Witch's Remain. This wild team, while nowhere close to being perfect, can do 141 million damage, while also surviving for less than 7 minutes, which is kind of typical for two support teams in Season 4. Now is the time to admit when you are wrong, and I were wrong. During my initial test, the next team was closer to the top two teams than when I started playing around with it. Rank 1, Rook. Rook is once again unquestionable top Vortex team despite other teams doing more damage. He's still far away and I am nowhere close to maxing out the Psychic Core. The team I will use is probably not even pro properly min-maxed as I did not spend too much time trying different sets or artifacts because there is no reason to, since the damage difference is colossal. Hopefully the developers will come to sense and try reducing his unlimited scaling or just the passive for the time being. But anyway, for those of you who own Rook, let's go over the team. The core of Rook team does not change. With recent nerfs to Nargo, we could play her as Witches Remains a player, but I decided to go with Whisk. Scenario and Kalavara will use exactly the same equipment as with Poison and Wild teams. Rook will use his exclusive artifact and all damage dealers will use the emissary set as I had better results with it. Whisk will use Witch's Remain and Dargo will use the Corrosion artifact that swamp. However, I am certain that there will be better artifacts than this one, but there is no point of min-maxing on test server. The timings are very basic as well, since all damage dealers have emissary set, their rotation changes from 20 seconds to 19 and a half and we start with Dargo at 11.7 and apply Witch's Remains with Whisk at 13 and a half. Then we follow with Rook's ultimate just after Dargo orbs. This team, without trying, can do 249 million damage while surviving the same amount of time as the other top three teams. Again, there is so much I can improve but there's no reason to. Just as a bonus and something to refle reflect on the issue we have with Rook, I created a team that can beat all the previous nine teams, but not the Rook with the exclusive artifact. And that team is Rook with Music Box, which does 180 million damage, which is 40 million damage more than the second and third team do. While the meta will not change due to Rook dominance in season four, just like in season three, we can see few other teams doing way better than in previous season seasons, especially Thunderbolt and Shadow. But in the end, it does not matter. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please click the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thank you for watching. Stay safe. Bye.